the dark, dark woods. There is a dark, dark house. And in that dark, dark house, there is a dark, dark room. And she relationships. I am a fan of underground music, which is largely made up of no-fi. No-fi is a genre of music where people use distorted guitars and synthesizers, as well as alarm clock sounds and circuit bent Game Boys to make music. I remember first stumbling upon Shadow Man while browsing on YouTube. What drew me to him was the fact that he made no-fi music. His music was pretty simple. I remember one track being two whole minutes of a digital alarm clock beeping. He used a low resolution black and white image of an open door leading to a dark room to accompany his tracks. He didn't give his real name, but none of that mattered to me. I continued to listen to his music. Then one night, while I was sleeping, I heard a loud thump, often like a book falling off a shelf and I woke up. I got kind of freaked out, and I thought it was just me being paranoid like it always has been when things like this happened. I got out of bed and paced around my apartment for a few minutes to shake it off. Eventually the silence got lonely, and I needed to hear something make sound. I flipped on my television and started experimenting with my old Yamaha keyboard. I don't necessarily know how to play it, but sometimes I'd go over there and start poking at it. A couple days later, no, the next day, I was listening to a Shadow Man track on YouTube when I glanced over at the related section and I noticed a Shadow Man track I hadn't heard before. It was entitled Restless Night. I looked at the upload date. It read January 10th, 2018. Knowing it was new, and that I'd be interested in hearing something new from this guy, I clicked on the video link. The familiar black and white doorway popped up. The track was a very crude recording of piano keys being played at random, with voices in the background that sounded like they came from a TV or radio. This sounded way too familiar. I hit the replay button and listened to it again. Then it hit me. This was a recording of me. It was about a month ago that I ordered a used laptop off of eBay. 40 bucks? That was much. The guy I ordered it from didn't have any feedback. I thought that was odd, but I needed something to replace my old crappy computer, so I was desperate. It got here within less than a week. Never in my entire life had I ordered something off eBay, and to have it come in the mail so fast. Now I know what you're all going to say. Oh, another creepypasta article about a haunted computer that has videos of satanic rituals, suicide and haunted computer games. It was nothing like that. The computer worked fine. It was almost as if it were brand new. I went online, played games on Newgrounds, watched videos on YouTube, installed a few of my favorite computer games. Things were just fine. Until tonight. I turned the computer off and went to bed. At one point, I thought I heard the sound of someone crying. At first, I thought I was hearing things, but as I laid in bed, it seemed that the crying would keep getting louder. The crying was eventually replaced by a piercing loud scream, which made me jump out of bed, turn the lights on, and look around the room. 
The sounds were suddenly gone. I must have had a bad dream, but that was nothing compared to the dream I had when I went back to sleep. I had a dream I was sitting on a dock at some kind of lake. Looking down at the lake, I saw a girl splashing around, screaming, Save me! I can't swim! I jumped in and swam towards her. Just as I reached out to grab her, she sunk down into the water. She was gone, but I could still hear her screaming, Save me! She suddenly reappeared much further in the lake, still struggling to get out and crying for help. I swam closer to her, but someone began pulling me away from her as she was drowning. As I was pulled away, I saw even more children in the lake, but they were much further than the girl was. By the looks of it, they seemed to be the ones pulling her into the water. The girl just kept screaming, save me, as if that was all she could say. The unseen person just kept pulling me away until everything turned red. I woke up, but I was still shaking. I've never had a dream that felt so real. Realizing that I had slept in, I ran to school. When I went to class, everything was different. Our teacher, Mr. Armand, he wasn't there. Instead, it was this angry old lady. I asked for her name and what happened to Mr. Armand, and she just told me to sit down. Looking behind me, None of the usual students were there. Instead, it was all the kids in the lake. I sat at my desk, and to my surprise, the girl who was drowning was sitting right next to me. All of the kids seemed to act very strangely. A lot of them seemed angry and hateful or about to start crying. They all seemed to hate the teacher. The girl who drowned seemed genuinely scared, like she was in a trance. During roll call, none of the kids would answer to the teacher. As the teacher became angry with one of the students, asking him to look at her, the kid tore the top of his desk off and threw it at her. Such surprising strength for such a skinny kid. He was like a skeleton. The teacher didn't seem to care too much. She just said, What's your problem? After a long silence, the kid finally looked into her eyes and said, You are. Again, the teacher gave him an expressionless stare until she went back to her desk. The girl handed me a note that read, Leave this place or she'll trap you too. That is when I left. I couldn't stay there. And I wanted to know what was going on. Upon getting home, my laptop had been turned on and a word processor page had been opened and it read, save me. I sent a bunch of messages to the guy who gave me the laptop, but he wouldn't respond. I was confused and scared. I didn't know who I was, where I was, or if I was just imagining things. That night, I had another dream. This time, all the kids were drowning in the lake, all of them screaming for me to save them. I was hesitant, but before I could jump in and save anyone, that teacher, the old lady grabbed me and pulled me away from them. I woke up in the middle of the night, crying. Now I understand, this lady had trapped these kids. They are prisoners. Alive or dead, they are still prisoners. I've never really believed in the supernatural, but I was beginning to lose my mind. This couldn't be real, but it felt real. I skipped the next two days of school. Every day, I swear to God, I would hear the sound of someone whispering to me, begging me to save them. Every time I blink, I have visions of dead children floating in the lake. I finally lost it and destroyed the laptop. 
I felt like it had to be a source of some kind. I smashed it to pieces with a hammer and burned the remains. I decided to go back to school. Mr. Armand was back, and so was my usual class. Everything seemed like they were back to normal. I asked Mr. Armand if he knows what happened. He said school had been cancelled for the last few days. He didn't seem to know anything else. I sat at my desk, and I was simply under the impression that I imagined it all. I looked inside my desk and noticed a piece of paper. All it said was thank you over and over again, and each time it was different handwriting. Everything stayed normal. After that, silence. It's been a while, and I've had time to think about this, and I keep having second thoughts before I do anything. My name is Jake. I like music. I like music so much I have it written in black marker on the back of my iPod. One day, while I was looking up songs on iPod Touch, I came across an album named My Favorite Tunes in the featured section of iTunes. The cover was just a photo of a dark room with a 15 or 16 year old boy lying on his bed with his eyes closed and with headphones in his ears. I thought it was funny that an album named this would show up in the featured section and decided to buy the album without even checking out the songs in it. It took about 30 minutes to download the entire album. My internet was pretty slow at the time. And during that time, I was playing some songs on my guitar. When it was finished downloading, I hopped onto the couch and started listening to the first song. It was the song Rock Lobster from the B-52s. But it sounded a little... odd. The notes seemed in a higher pitch, and in some parts of the song, it just sounded like a big mess of random notes. I just thought that it wasn't the song, and it was just me since I hadn't listened to Rock Lobster in a while. When the song was finally over, I started to switch to the next song. I glanced at the cover art and thought I recognized the teenager in the cover art. I thought nothing of it and proceeded to the next song. The second song was We Are The Champions, but it seemed higher pitch and had spots with jumbles of notes just like the previous song, but this time it was even more noticeable. Also, I heard someone whisper, Jake, at the end of the song, but I just thought it was my imagination. I was a little scared, but I still had the courage to listen to the next song. The third one's name was Day, and when I listened to it, it was just ambience of a neighborhood or a small town alongside a running car engine. It was about 40 seconds long, and when it was over, I was confused, but still proceeded to listen to the rest of the songs. The next three songs were Sweet Dreams, Don't Stop Believing, and Breakfast in America. All were the same effects as the first two, and I still thought I heard my name being whispered during the songs. Before I played the second to last song on the album, I looked at the cover art again, and I thought I definitely knew that teenager, but didn't know who. The second to last song was called Night. The first 20 seconds were nighttime ambience, with the sound of someone walking on pavement. After that was the sound of the person who was previously walking, now picking a lock on a door. After 25 seconds or so, the door finally opened, and the person now sounded like he was walking up a staircase. When the person got off the stairway, he sounded like he was now walking on a carpet. 
While he was walking, you could hear him whispering. Bathroom, parents' room, laundry room. Here we go, Jake's room. After hearing him now, now I knew he was a guy. After hearing him say that, my heart stopped for a second. I now knew that he wasn't in any random building. He was in my house. I started to reach for the phone to call the police while still listening to the song. I heard him open the door and walk for a bit, then stop suddenly. Say cheese, I heard him say. He then immediately took a picture, and then the song was over. I quickly looked at the cover again and realized that the picture was of me, probably taken at the same time as this song was recorded. I hesitantly listened to the last song in the album, which is named Best Friends. I heard the same guy from the previous song say, Hello Jake, if you try and call the police, which I know you probably will, let's just say bad things will happen. All I want for us is to become friends. He pauses for about 10 seconds. Best friends. I put that on the phone and without thinking, deleted the album. I went over to a friend's house as my parents were gone to pick up my uncles and aunts from the airport and told him about the album. He didn't believe me and when I tried to re-download the album from the iTunes store, it was gone. He called me a liar and told me to get out of his house. I went home disappointed and afraid. It has been a couple of months since the incident, and I am paranoid almost all the time, especially when I go to sleep. I have had no encounter yet with the person who created the album, except for sometimes this one car seems to slow down whenever they pass me by when I'm walking on the sidewalk, and that recently someone wrote on my iPod under where I wrote I like music. It says... I like music too, Jake. Please subscribe and like if you love my channel.